evening, guys. Welcome to another episode of The Just Danny Show. This is a let's discuss in regard to last night's council meeting, which should have been relatively short, but was not because they added two presentations that they shouldn't have done. And uh, Murray couldn't shut the fuck up about that commercial center that he wants, which we all know is literally a vocational school is what he wants. And we'll get into that and we'll, we'll just go ahead and jump right in. Um, as you are aware, they start off with the invocation, Pledge of Allegiance, and they get to public comments. Uh, I went up to public comments, of course, because I had a bone to pick. Take a look. In the March 2024 edition of the Royal Times, for those that you don't know what that is, that's a publication for all the residents in, in Kings Ridge. There's an article that I found kind of hilarious, but oh so telling. Uh, Mr. Boltis, I think you may want to listen to this closely. You too, Mr. Gonzalez. In part, it stated in their publication, go ahead, write it down. Uh, at the February 28th board meeting, this is what it said in the publication. At the February 28th board meeting, Claremont City Councilman Michael Gonzalez said he was honored to represent Kings Ridge, comma, now part of his jurisdiction. I I'm sorry, but I'm sure you all know that you don't have districts as council members, certainly not jurisdictions. I don't know if you're living out your police fantasy, but you don't have jurisdiction, Mr. Gonzalez, and Mr. Boltis knows that. Um, so I'm not understanding why you're parading this guy around one of the big, bigger voter precincts here in Claremont just before he runs again in June. Uh, uh, as, as that's their jurisdiction. He's so proud to now be part of um, the representative as part of his jurisdiction. Last I knew, every single one of you can go to Kingsbridge or be, be people from Kingsbridge can call you Chandra and say they have a problem. Why is this clown going to Kingsbridge with this other clown saying that he, it's his jurisdiction. There's no jurisdiction in council. It, it, there's just not, or districts. So I'm trying to figure out what the scam is between you two. Well, I think I probably know. It's actually comical, Gonzalez, because as if campaigning in the produce section any given day of the week between four and seven at Publix wasn't enough, he's got to parade you around one of the bigger pre voting precincts like a trophy wife. I'll tell you why, it's to garner votes for you come June, because he knows that if you get unseated, sir, his job is at risk, he's gonna be fired. So he's touting you around all these precincts, at least Kings Ridge, 100% this was in their, their publication, that it's your jurisdiction. I would be upset if I was the other three of y'all. Who's he to say that he's 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 the the, the head guy for Kings Ridge? Such a joke. Yeah, you know y'all think we're dumb, Baltis Gonzalez. You think we're stupid, but I know why you're doing it. I know why you're doing it. And and striking up conversations with unsuspecting people in the produce section of Publix, Mr. Gonzalez, is really desperate. I mean, it's I can smell your desperation, both y'all, and it's nauseating. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Are these fresh? Do you th excuse me. Do you think these are fresh? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What? You're running for what? See your card. Well, can you tell me about these peppers? If you can, I'll vote for you. <laughs> okay. How desperate does one have to be to strike up conversation, probably 98% of the time with women, um, in the produce section and hand them your card, your business card, your councilman card? That's pretty fucking desperate, okay? And and again, if you're at Citrus Tower Publix or the one over there on Hancock between 4 to 7 any day of the week, between yeah, between 4 and 7, you, you, you'll you catch yourself uh, checking him out, doing his little thing, doing his little thing. <laughs> Um, desperate, desperate. But aside from that desperation and complete idiocy and stupidity, um, well, you heard me in the video. This, you know that Boltice is parading him around one of the biggest precincts here in Claremont to garner votes for him so he can get reelected again because Bolsack needs Michael to get reelected again. Because if we get someone to unseat Michael, that will make three votes God willing that Todd gets in there May 14th. And we know Chandra wants to get rid of the city manager. So that would make three votes that we would definitely have to fire Balsack and ultimately also the city attorney. 
They are desperate to keep their jobs, especially Ball Sack's cush job that he's currently getting $180,000 for until he can continually uh, raise our millage rate and get more and more tax money for himself and his BFFs there at the CPD. Um, but until then, he's currently making $180,000, you know, his little cush job. He needs this job. He's not retired. He said he was retired when he came here, but he's not retired. I'm sorry. He's not. Um, so, so of course he's going to parade Michael around. He's going to parade Michael around anywhere he can to garner votes and make these people in Kings Ridge. Now, they're not all elderly per se. It's 55 and up. I mean, I'll be 55 next year. So, um, you know, but for the most part, He's, you know, preying on the elderly, if you will, and to making them think, bamboozling them into thinking that he is 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 their Lord and Savior or something like, you know, I'm, I'm honored to represent Kings Ridge that who is now in my jurisdiction. <laughs> Gather round, y'all. You in my jurisdiction. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, this is so stupid. It is so stupid. It's so misleading. There are no, again, there are no jurisdictions. There are no districts. Not for lack of trying, because we tried to get districts. Those of you that have been in the city long enough, you remember this. Several councils ago, we tried to get districts. They poo-pooed it. But currently, no, we do not have districts. We never have had districts. We don't, we certainly don't have jurisdictions, okay? But he's trying to go over there and, 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 and you know, cater to them to make them think that that he is their representative so he can get the votes come November. And Balzac is proudly, like I said, tat, you know, like got him like a trophy wife parading him over there so he can get the votes. It's not because he gives a shit about Michael. He gives a shit about his cush job people. Okay? All right? And um, he actually tried, Balzac actually tried to respond to me right after I left the podium. Murray wouldn't let him because there was other people uh, that were going to be approaching for the public comment se uh, session. So he made him wait until afterward. And uh, this was his response. Take a look. Mr. Botice. Yes, I, and I don't want to get in any tit for tats or, or back and forth, but uh, in regards to, uh, and, and I would say this to any subdivision that's out there, uh, the Kings Ridge uh, board um, asked myself to come out there and speak to them. And so, and I know they asked Mr. Gonzalez to come out and speak with them. So this was not, uh, you know, when, when we go out, and I know the mayor is going to speak to College Park this weekend. So uh, we go out when we're invited. Any HOA that would like to come out and give you a question and answer, um, you know, we are open to do that. Um, and that's that's what we're here for is to meet with residents if they would like to meet with us. Um, we're going to do another question and answer period with Commissioner Parks uh, later this month out at Kings Ridge. So again, if uh, with the residents, the last meeting was with their uh, board of directors. Uh, Mr. Purvis, who was the previous council member uh, that, that passed away, uh, lived in Kings Ridge. So they had a little bit more of a connection and the, the HOA board simply asked myself to go out there and ask Mr. Gonzalez to go out there. Uh, why they worded something in their newsletter, the way they worded it, it was simply so that they could stay connected. So. Uh, there, there's no nefarious plans. I would expect any subdivision that's out there, if you would like us to come out and speak to you, bring the police department, bring any department, uh, that's what we try and do to reach out uh, to the public. Uh, <laughs> okay, Balsack. So are you trying to say Kings Ridge people are morons? uh inept they can't read they can't comprehend i don't honestly think that minutes work that way to begin with uh, you know granted they're not verbatim word for word like when a court reporter enters into a meeting or otherwise it's not verbatim word for word but meeting minutes are never taken out of context whoever is making a record of those meeting minutes are precise they just don't add every single thing that was said. Like if I was going on, uh, the produce, for instance, if I was going on about produce during an HOA board meeting, 
they would leave out probably three or four paragraphs that I actually said and just keep the first two paragraphs. But they certainly are not going to remove words of what I said. And they certainly, Balsack, are not going to add words that I said. And you have to remember, folks, and for those that you lo- that live in an HOA, you have to remember these minutes need to be approved. This is like a big deal. It's like the it's like um, approving the minutes for council. It's just not all willy nilly kind of thing. Dominus ominous. Okay, whatever. These have to be formally approved as what was said. Don't turn this around, ball stack, like the Kings Ridge folks are dumb and have to be tw- the words have to be twisted to make them better understand. Okay. He forgets that I do my research. He forgets that I'm like probably smarter than most of the people, okay? And that I'm going to do my research. I am going to look up shit. And if I can't find it, I'll find somebody else that can find it, okay? And with that being said, let's pop up this little gem, shall we? Okay, as you can see here, these are the actual minutes. These are the actual minutes, okay, which were approved. Uh, they were approved by, by the HOA members, okay? By the HOA members because it's a big deal. We're not, again, we're not all willy-nilly. So I've got this in two parts because of the way that it was sent to me. But as you can see at the very, very top there, this is right off of somebody's computer screen. Approved board meeting minutes. Board of directors meeting approved February 28th of 2024 meeting minutes, Okay. So you can see all those folks that were involved that were in attendance. And of course, you have the Leland management off there to the right. And if you look all the way down to the bottom of this first page, you'll see where it begins talking about what Michael Gonzalez said. Well, it wasn't uh, fit into that first picture. So let's go on to the next um, picture there. Okay, so now you can see the highlight area. It says, City of Claremont Councilman Michael Gonzalez attended the February board meeting. Mr. Gonzalez stated that he is honored to represent... Kings Ridge Community Association that is now part of his jurisdiction. Did I stutter? Part of his jurisdiction. When when somebody's writing out those meeting minutes, they're not going to add that whole last section as part of my jurisdiction, part of his jurisdiction. They're not going to add that ball sack. Quit lying. Quit lying. I got you, bitch. I got you. I got you in a lie. Pure and simple, I got you in a lie, okay? Deal with it. This is Michael Gonzalez, who is desperate to get elected again, and Balsack again, who is super desperate to get him elected again to save his cush job. The thing is, is Gonzo's already fucked himself over with the Republican Party for advocating for Otis, along with uh, Gonzalez's wife pushing for Otis to to get into council come May 14th, okay? And I'm not going to get into the whole election thing because that's not what this podcast is about, but I will have another podcast in regard to the election. But do you see what I'm saying? He's supposed to be Republican, and he's um, advocating for, well, now he's MPA because he changed his uh, party affiliation just before he ran for obvious reasons. Again, we're not dumb, okay? All right? So so Gonzalez is fucked. He is fucked six ways to Sunday, and this is his way of becoming desperate. It's amazing what people will do when they're desperate. It's amazing what they will do from walking over people, lying, and now praying on the elderly. And yes, that's what I'm going to call it, praying on the elderly, making them think that they are something that they are not. Gonzalez is trying to make himself appear that he's something that he is not. Okay, don't, don't, don't buy into it. Okay, so, so that happened. And then um, Murray starts going off in the interim. I don't even know how we got lost in the weeds. We never even got to the actual agenda until probably 9 o'clock. Meeting starts at 6.30. They start, he starts getting off on a tangent because there was a couple of people that I think spoke during public comments. I, I don't know. I tune it out because it's, I'm sick of hearing it about the community center. It, it, you know, this has been going on and being talked about for, oh, my God, like, probably the last four years. And Murray, you know, he ran on on that, you know, everything he ran on was to help Lincoln Park, okay? Fuck the rest of the city. That's right, I said it, fight me. I just say what everybody's thinking, you're welcome. He ran to help his own community, okay? And his community is Lincoln Park, and that's all he fucking cares about. Now he's installed sidewalks that actually his community didn't even want, They didn't want sidewalks down there, but he did it anyway. 
your tax dollars, sidewalks for Lincoln Park. Fuck the sidewalk that's missing over here at Steve's Row where kids walk to school as well. Fuck that. Lincoln Park. And when he first got elected for his first term, he made sure that City Hall mowed and cleaned up Lincoln Park. He ordered them. He went in that building. He ordered them. Again, used to have a ton of moles at City Hall. I'm very, I have just a few now left. Okay. But I had a ton of moles back then. He literally walked into City Hall and demanded that they use our tax dollar resources, mowers, people, to go clean up Lincoln Park. This is all about Murray and Lincoln Park. This is not about Murray and the entire city of Claremont. It is about Lincoln Park. And so he wants to leave. Well, he wants to, you know, term out is what he said. So, you know, he thinks he's going to get elected for uh, eight more years. But whatever. We shall see. Um, or excuse me, four more years. Because he's got, we'd have four years left to be able to uh, sit in that seat. Because he's already used four. Um, and, you know, it's four two-year terms is all you're allowed now. So, um, and I think he's, he's just another, another one that's desperate. He's desperate to, to go ahead and, you know, check off the boxes about everything he ran for, right? So he can be touted as not only the first black mayor who gives a fuck what color you are, um, but also the fact that, you know, he accomplished everything that he said he would. And I think this is part of his bucket list for mayor. I really, really do. So he has taken this community center one level above what he should have last night. And he's acting like he's just up there and he's the lone wolf and he's going to be determining what happens with y'all's money. He went up on his tangent last night because, like I said, two people during public comments got up and was speaking about it. Like I said, I tuned most of that shit out because I'm sick of it. Sharon Keys is the biggest megaphone for that, for that bullshit. It used to be Paula Hoisington and Sharon Keyes. Now Sharon Keyes is the one that goes up there and starts going off. And some other white lady went up there and was, again, I tune it out because I'm fucking sick of hearing it. Um, but uh, he just started going off his tangent about the community center and how we just don't have enough land. We don't, the city sold off all of its land. And I, I said, I would not sell any more land. Well, I'm sorry. You fucking tapped out and got rid of the, the last lakefront property, didn't you, for a parking lot. But I digress. But anyway, he says, we need at least 10 acres and, uh, 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 you know, all, all the land we've been looking at <coughs> isn't big enough. And uh, 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 so if you know anybody that has at least 10 acres, you let us know and we'll buy it up and we put that community center on there. I'm sorry. Are you the only person up there? Are there not? Well, there should be four others, but currently there's three other people that sit by you. Do they not have a say in this? Do we not have um, an actual council meeting and have it on the agenda where the citizens get to vote on what happens with their fucking tax dollars, sir? He's up there literally making this statement. Literally, this came out of his mouth. If you know anybody with 10 acres or more, you let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll buy it up and, we, and we, we build us a community center. Fuck you, Murray. Fuck you. And P.S., by the way, we already have a community center. It's just not called a community center, but we literally actually have two community centers. Can anyone out there in the audience kind of just like Tourette's yell it out right now? <laughs> we have the Claremont City Center, which kids can go in there and utilize for birthday parties, uh, whatever the fuck they want, right? Um, that would be a half-assed community center, but close to one. But what's the real one that would really qualify as a community center? Think about it. Did anyone yell it out yet? The Ark. We got a swimming pool. We've got basketball courts, pickleball courts, tennis courts. To me, that's a community center. Only thing we're missing out there would be like a like weights, like a weight center. And then and then boom, it's a full blown community center. But for the most part, that's a fucking community center, Murray. Which we should never have purchased the Ark anyway. That's again an, a, another podcast. Okay, we, we're in debt because of that. We went into debt for that stupid building. We should never have bought that. The city is not in the entertainment or the sports entertainment industry. And then I'm segueing into the pickleball court bullshit last night too. Okay, we're just not. We don't need a fucking community center. And then he was touting that it needed to go right there in Lincoln Park because that's centrally located for all the children. I'm sorry, Lincoln Park is centrally located for all the kids? What about the kids that live way out there on off of Hancock? I don't think Lincoln Park is centrally located. I just don't. 
It's centrally located in your brain because you want it for your community. And let's just, let's just say what it is. Let's just say what it is. Let's just call it for what it is. And I've been saying this for the last four years ever since he has birthed this out of his stupid mouth. It is a vocational school. That's what Murray wants is a vocational school. Every fucking workshop we've had on this bullshit community center that he keeps running his mouth about, he constantly, they, 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 had, a, they had a workshop, right? Several. And in that workshop, they said that they wanted to have um, a daycare center for, for older teens that perhaps didn't finish high school that could go in there and learn a trade. That is not a community center, sir or ma'am. For, the, for Hoisington and Sharon Keys, that's not a community center. That's a vocational school, okay? A vocational school that the taxpayers, I'm sorry, are not going to foot the bill for that. And we don't have to. Let the private sector step up. Let the private sector step up. You want something like that? Let the private sector step, step up. Let the Lincoln Park Alliance Committee step up. Why don't you all spend your money for it? It's, it's going to go in your area and you want it. Okay, but let's just stop with the fucking, you know, smoke and mirror show. Let's call it for what it is. They want a vocational school. Okay, that's what they want. Because if it, they really want a community center, they would know we already basically have one. Sans the fucking weight room that it would be missing. But other than that, that's a community center. Spend it. You know how much that would be, P.S., by the way? Like millions of dollars. But according to Murray, if you got 10 acres you want to sell, the city is going to buy it and they will build. I'm sorry, without a vote, without it being on an agenda for the citizens to, this guy is a narcissist and disgust. Like he, I don't know who's worse at this point of, of a narcissist, him or Balsack. I really don't know. But anyway, moving on. And then we got into this pickleball court bullshit somebody got up during public comments was talking about the pickleball courts how they did not want it they had a room full of tennis players and then boom last minute they they put a presentation up on uh they they uh put a presentation up about pickleball courts that was also given during a workshop back in january it's it's just the same exact um presentation they did they gave during the workshop but he called brian up another brian uh, with Parks and Rec to come up with that presentation. It's like, jeez, I'm going to add another presentation that's not even on the agenda. This is what took all night. So he gets up there and starts going through the pickleball court shit. Um, and it, it, and I, did a, I did a show on that, that particular workshop. In a nutshell, people that don't live in Claremont, we're talking Groveland, Orlando, Mineola, and there was one other city. They don't live here. They don't live in Claremont. They are not taxpayers, but come to our council meetings and cry baby bitch that they need more pickleball courts. And the tennis players who were in the audience were pissed because they're like, we currently share. Can we just keep sharing? Like, what's the problem? Why do we have to take tennis courts away from the tennis people that actually are fucking Claremont citizens, P.S., by the way, to to kiss the asses of out of towners that come to our city to utilize our our resources i'm sorry but this is the most asinine fucking thing i've ever heard of it makes me so pissed off and yes they voted on that last night they voted to spend uh gosh i'm trying to remember how much it was from the workshop it was over a hundred thousand dollars on these pickleball courts between lighting and striping and pay uh you know the, the 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 top like the pavement or whatever the fuck it is uh for these courts was well over a hundred thousand dollars boom gone your money for out-of-towners maybe a few claremontonians huh but mostly out-of-towners we had some bitch from fucking orlando uh first of all goes up to me i'd like to thank you all for doing such a wonderful job yeah uh, why, why why didn't you just have all the men up there pull down their pants <laughs> That's right, I said it. And I hope she's listening. She's probably not because she's from Orlando. She's fucking clueless about what goes on here. But she will attend our Claremont City Council meeting and demand shit. I'm sorry if you don't live in our fucking city and you are not a taxpayer, you should not be demanding shit, ma'am. Get your fucking skinny ass back to Orlando and go play pickleball with your fucking idiots. Stay the fuck out of our town. Don't like it? 
don't like we don't have pickleball courts, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Can you believe this, folks? Can you believe this? We're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on people that don't even pay taxes, don't even live in our city. They voted for it last night. Pickleball courts. I'm sorry, but we have bigger fish to fry than worrying about fucking banging a damn ball up against a fucking wall or however the fuck they play it. I don't even give a shit. Do a real sport. (laughs) That's right. I said that. Moving on. So the last order of business I want to go over was um, something that was on the consent agenda that shouldn't have been on the consent agenda. Why shouldn't it have been on the consent agenda? Because it has to do with your privacy. It should never have been placed on the consent agenda, but you know how they are. They sneak shit in there. And if it's not for people like me or other people that pay attention or that have time to pay attention, um, it's not going to get pulled. It's not going to be discussed. Well, I had it pulled. They wanted to rush me the fuck out of there. And I'm going to show you the clip. Um, They wanted to rush me because they had already taken way too long to even get to the agenda. We had just got into the agenda, which was the consent agenda. I asked for number four to be pulled, which is drones for the police department. They're considering buying two drones, $53,000 in total. It's already budgeted. We gave them $77,900 and something dollars for toys, and they're choosing to use $53,000 of that for these toys. Um, So I had it pulled, and uh, this is, and I'll expound on it because they rushed me, but go ahead and this is what I said. Take a look. For the folks that didn't hear, it's um, agenda item four, which would be the drones, purchase of two drones for the police department, $53,000. I just have a couple of questions. Um, As a city council, city in general, do you have any policies and procedures, um, restrictions for these drone flight, this drone flight program in place? I would imagine law enforcement is... um, guided by restrictions and um okay well actually per um yeah, FFA, a report FFA is, is they have a lot of guidance and guidelines they would have to adhere to as well but any other questions Are, well no i i'm not done i mean i know you want to rush me but um according to a report by the aclu the council must establish appropriate restrictions and policies for drone flights because without these in place uh, drones meant to act as first responders could push the boundaries of monitoring and surveillance. We could have a mass surveillance regime in the skies. So I think you need to put something in place. And I was also wondering if you were aware of the Florida statute in regard to searches and seizures using a drone. Probably not. So I'm going to put this in. We're aware of all that. The police department will comply with all recording. Okay, any, so any, any other concerns, Ms. Ms. Page? Okay. Um, so the only exceptions that they can use these drones, the police department, is to counter a high risk of terrorist attack by a specific individual organization, um, or if they obtain a search warrant first. Uh, if the law enforcement agency possesses reasonable suspicion that under particular circumstances, swift action is needed to prevent imminent danger to life. Um, those are the only three ways that they can use these drones, and I want to make sure that that's what they use it for. And again, I'm going to ask that you put policies in place uh, for, for restrictions on, on using these drones for people's privacy. You can also use them for aerial perspective of a crowd of 50 people or more, provided that um, there's also guidelines for that, which you have to put into place before they can use those drones for um, 50 people or more in a crowd. So I just want to say, because there's also live streaming. I looked at the uh, the the uh, receipt, if you will, for the li- of what you guys ordered. Live streaming a video to a single user, multi-viewer streaming capability, allowing user the real to share real-time video. Um, so this 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 is important because people can um, actually have a legal recourse against the police department, aka the city, when using these drones if they violate state statute. So I just want to make you aware of that, and I'm, I I will FOIA request later on. I want to make sure you're putting policies in, in place for this drone program. You should not let a police department determine those procedures and policies. It is you, the council, per the ACLU, and the report that they did. Um, so I know Michelle said the police, but are you going to put them in place? I didn't get an answer. Are you going to put policies and procedures in place regarding these drone, this drone program? Does all your concerns, ma'am? That's a big major concern, well, and it should be the ma'am, public's I, I, concern. I, I, are you 
Is that all? You yeah, I need to know that because it, I mean, we have privacy if they're on route to a, to a call, which there are certain issues, certain in the Florida statute that they can use those drones. I just named those three. We will, take we will your address, each, address your concerns, ma'am. Once well, I'm sure you will address my concerns. You never usually do, um, but for privacy issues, and again, if you violate them and they're not doing the drone program correctly, there is legal recourse for the Florida statute. The civilians can sue you. So Thank you. Mr. Manzaris, uh, I'm not sure uh, what the policies are, but if, I know you... <laughs> like every, like, like your law enforcement agency, your police department has professional standards that they are required to follow based on their certifications, including on our, our several standard operating procedures that they follow and they, are, they have in place so that their law enforcement officers do it. They have a myriad of responsibilities under state statutes with regard to criminal statutes, and I assure you they comply with all of them. This is just merely one of them. As is often happens at that podium, you have people that provide you limited information about it. And if I just may, since we're spending a lot of time doing it, the statutory, the statutory language related to use of the drones says that drones can be, as Ms. Page pointed out, used for high risk of terrorist attacks. Obviously it can be. However, it can also be used in any instance where a judge has issued a search warrant, where a law, law enforcement agency possesses reasonable suspicion that there is imminent danger to life or serious damage, to also to provide a law enforcement agency with aerial perspective of a crowd of 50 more people to assist the law enforcement, these are all different areas, to assist the law enforcement agency with traffic management, to facilitate a law enforcement agency's collection of evidence at a crime scene or a traffic crash scene, by city to assess damage related to a flood, wildfire, or other natural um, disaster, by the fire department to perform tasks within the scope and practice authorized by their certification, essentially fire inspections, uh, or um, by any individual that's licensed to use drones for reasonable tasks to do that. So there's a myriad of example of uses for this stuff that are well beyond what was just reported to you. So I want you to make it clear that the, 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 the I want to point it to you that the statute language is in there in place. The city is well aware of that. And I assure you the police department and their folks that will be operating these pieces of equipment will be compliant with the statutes. Okay, Dan, and you can kind of hear me out in the audience um, if you were paying really, really good attention to the sound. Uh, I only had three minutes, Dan. This is what happens when you get someone up to the podium that gives, uh, you know, very few, uh, literally, basically a little bit of information. I'm sorry, I didn't have 10, 20 minutes to read the entire fucking statute, you fucking moron. Mr. Burns looking idiot. This is also what happens when you hire someone, City of Claremont, to be your city attorney that doesn't know how to fucking litigate. And we have to farm that out and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars extra. You're welcome. Mr. I can't litigate. How's your wife and the trainer, by the way? Just wondering. Um, so he actually reiterated basically what I fucking said. And I was out in the audience once again, if you could hear me, I was like, I said that. I said that. And I said that. Um, but what I want you to understand and what, what they did not allow me to actually speak because they were trying to rush me, obviously. Um, is that they only are allowed with, with, by the way, there are only 15 states out of 50 states, 15 states that require a search warrant with drone programs that you have to have a search warrant before you can, uh, utilize a drone in such matters. Okay. Um, luckily Florida is one of those states. We require a search warrant. Okay. So. I'm going to read you, and if you want to write this down, go ahead. It's not going to be boring because I'm not going to read word, word, word for word the whole, the whole thing. But it's Florida Statute 934.50, searches and seizure using a drone. Prohibited use of drones. Uh, a law enforcement agency may not use a drone to gather evidence or other information except as provided in subsection 4. Well, let's read subsection four real quick. So uh, they can use it to counter, a, like, like I said, and then Dan repeated, to counter a high risk of a terrorist attack by a specific individual organization if the United States Secretary of Homeland Security determines 
that credible intelligence indicates that there is such a risk. So they can't just determine it themselves like, oh, this is a risk, of, this is a terrorist risk. They have to make sure that the United States Secretary of Homeland Security determines it to be so. That's number one, how they can use a drone. Kind of extreme, right? Is it ever going to happen? Who knows? Probability? No. Okay, uh, subsection B. If the law enforcement agency first obtains a search warrant signed by a judge authorizing the use of a drone, which I set up there and dipshit said, okay? So they have to, they can't just all willy-nilly pull out their zone or their drone out of their asshole and start flying it over your house to get evidence. They need a, they need a search warrant. C, if the law enforcement agency possesses reasonable sp- suspicion that under particular circumstances, swift action is needed to prevent imminent danger to life or serious damage to property or to forestall the imminent escape of a suspect or the destruction of evidence and to facilitate the search for a missing person. See, I couldn't read all of that because I only had three fucking minutes. I was just trying to get the gist of it up there. But I was berated later. You only give me three minutes, assholes, but then you're going to berate me that I didn't give enough information. Only in Claremont, folks. Uh, uh, D, now this is where it gets a little hinky because remember how I, uh, at that, that video piece I showed you, how I demanded that we put policies and procedures and restrictions in place per the city council for the CPD. Remember I said that? So the only way that this next part they can utilize it for this next part is if those policies and procedures are in place. Again, I couldn't say that up there, didn't have enough time, and they were cutting me off using my time. So this last part, to provide a law enforcement agency with an aerial perspective of a crowd of 50 people or more, provided that the law enforcement agency that uses the drone to provide an aerial perspective of a crowd of 50 people or more must have policies and procedures that include the following guidelines. For the agency's use of the drone, for the proper storage, retention, and release of the images um, that address the personal safety and constitutional protections of the people being observed. Okay, that's the most important right there. Guidelines of policies and procedures must be in place that address the personal safety and constitutional protections of the people being observed. The council must do that. They must put those into place. And as you could see, Michelle was up there being a bitch, as usual, useless as tits on a nun, Michelle Pines. She cut me off and we'll, oh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll think about it, basically, in a nutshell. She's saying, you know, oh, we'll, oh, we'll take into consideration. The fuck you will. No, you won't. You're going to leave it up to your precious CPD boys, okay? And to let them make their own fucking rules. It's not how that works. I talked to the cops outside last night and told them the same shit. I said, no, you don't need to be making your own rules and policies and procedures when it comes to using those drones, sir. No, you don't. That's like giving a, and I, I use this exa- exact analogy. I said, that is like allowing a toddler to write up his nap schedule. Okay, you don't do that. You don't let a toddler determine when they should lay down to take a nap. And you certainly don't allow a police department to run amok with their own policies and procedures when it comes to the usage of drones. I'm sorry, folks. Nay, nay. No. So if they want to whip these out during the next First Friday food truck event or any other event where there's 50 plus people or more, these policies must be in place. We must have policies per Florida statute. So if you see that drone up in the air during an event of many people, you need a FOIA request or contact me and I'll FOIA request and, and I want to see these policies because legally per Florida statute, they cannot even, they can't put it over an event like that. Unless they have these policies and procedures in place specifically that address right here, subsection C, that address the personal safety and constitutional protections of the people being observed. We've got juveniles at events. Do you want your kids live streamed? Because that's on the um, invoice, the invoice that they have that I read. Uh that they of the drones they purchased live streaming a video to a single user and multi-viewer streaming capability allowing user to share real-time video now according to to uh officer strickland who is one who is one of the trained um 
pilots, if you will. I guess in total, they have three trained pilots that are the only people able to utilize these drones and control these drones. But I called bullshit last night in the back parking lot, and you can ask him. I said, what if you get some asshat at three in the morning that decides he wants to be a dick, take one of those drones out, and fly it over my house or some other person's house illegally and, and surveilling people? You know, and they swear there's a chain of, of you know, um, uh, what is it, chain of uh, command or whatever the fuck it's called. I'm having a brain fart. You know what I'm talking about. We have to like, you know, so-and-so, you have to sign for this and that person signs for that person. And there's like, you know, like, you know, with election, the ballots and shit, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, how, how's that working out for you and other other police departments amongst the in the United States of of asshole cops that go into evidence lockers and um, steal drugs or take steal evidence? How's that working out? Well, those people get fired. I'm like, you guys get fired for all kinds of stupid shit. I'm talking, you know, it doesn't matter. That doesn't. Meanwhile, you got drone footage of uh, Miss Smith's titties because she thought that she had um privacy she had the expectation of privacy in her backyard so she's sunbathing nude meanwhile you got a drone flying over her fucking backyard because you're supposedly chasing a suspect that just eluded police with drugs or evidence and you're worried he's going to drop the evidence so you got a drone flying over and you and you would inadvertently get get footage of miss smith's titties uh, officer asshole over here hears about it, goes in the evidence locker, pulls it up, or wherever the fuck they're going to keep that fucking footage and, and evidence or some other um, place in the, in the police department. Um, chain of custody. P.S. By the way, I'm sorry, I was having a brain fart. Chain of custody. Um, and um, oh, you know, I heard so and so's titties are on that, and they start, you know, passing it around. Cops have been fired in other places for taking pictures on their cell phones of dead bodies. And passing it around at, via text. Yeah, they get fired for that. But who gives a fuck if they get fired? You know what I mean? Who gives a fuck? In the grand scheme of things, who gives a fuck if they get fired? Miss Smith's titties are now all over the fucking internet. Thanks to some asshole cop. You know? Your chain of custody. I mean, they how'd that work out for the 2020 election? That's right. I said it. Fuck you. How'd that work out for the 2020 election? How does the chain of custody work out when, when we got cops in all different states in the United States stealing shit from an evidence room? How does that chain of custody work? How's that work again? Unless we have policies and procedures put into place, even though they're fucking idiots up there on the dais, so they, 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 they probably don't even understand what policies they need to put in place because they're so fucking stupid. I mean, could you picture Michael figuring out what policies and procedures to put into place for a drone program? Could you? Could you? From a guy that hangs out in the produce section talking to unsuspecting people. <laughs> um, so I told them in the back parking lot also that um, there definitely needs to be limits on the camera and video footage, right, of the device that's allowed to capture and how long it should be retained. We need to put policies in, in place to direct the, police, the CPD of stuff that they can even take video of. We need to have restraints on that to protect our citizens. Again, this is going to be a mass surveillance regime in the sky. Big brother. Especially if you have a cop that hates you. And I have a few. Uh -huh. Do I really want them buzzing over my fucking pool deck when I have the expectation of privacy? Do you know what I'm saying? There are some cities, by the way, I did research on this. There are some cities that have put into place policies and procedures in regard to when you are... Um, you know, chasing a suspect or whatever, you know, with the drone. That the drone cannot be angled and get capturing video footage of just directly below it so they don't, in fact, inadvertently catch filming of people that are expecting their privacy in their yards and stuff, that it has to be aiming straight towards the suspect. That's a policy. That's a restriction. If we don't put these into place, the CPD is just going to go by the FAA restrictions, which is fine because they should, right? And the Florida statute, which is how they can use it. They have to have a court order. Um, or sorry, I'm sorry, they have to have a search warrant, um, the imminent danger and all that stuff. Sure, you can follow that stuff, but what's not in the statute, they, they're going to do, right? So, no, we need to have additional policies, procedures, and restrictions. Also... 
Yeah, right here. This is, I wrote it down. Additionally, drone cameras should not be allowed to record while en route to an incident to reduce the possibility of capturing irrelevant footage of residents' private activities. Are they going to ensure that? Or that they could say they will, but unless we have policies and procedures and restrictions that have been put in place by our council, they can do what they want, right? Also, any data that is a legit that is legitimately recorded should be subject to sharing restraints, meaning footage may not be assessed by other parties, with exceptions, of course, for criminal investigations or trials. So some, you know, some other asshole in the PD you know, can't look at that shit. It's none of his business because it's not his case. He's not part of the criminal investigation and he or the trial. But you know what they do. You know they look at other, you know, oh, let me see that text you got. What picture did you get? You know? Oh, chain of custody, Danny. No, fuck that. I don't trust that. I don't trust that. I'm sorry, but I don't trust that. Also, lastly, I said performance audits should be con- conducted to indicate if the drones actually deliver operational advantages for public safety missions. Let's let's audit this on a monthly basis. Is it worth the return on investment? Is it is you know, is it is it worth it to continue with this program? Is it is it actually doing anything for public safety missions or did we just want toys, boys? And lastly, I address Strickland up there at the podium. You probably aren't going to be able to hear it. I'll run it. I'll let you watch it here in just a sec, but I wasn't on mic. But per the Federal Aviation Administration, drone operators may not fly the devices beyond the user's visual line of sight. Now, you can get an exemption from this, and some police departments do get an exemption, but it takes almost a year, and you have to jump through so many hoops to get the exemption. So nine out of 10 times, these Police departments do not have this exemption, so thereby they have to abide by the FAA rule in which, again, drone operators may not fly the device beyond the user's uh, line of sight. Which means, why do we even fucking have them? Really, if you kind of think about it, because if I can't fly it per the FAA, not even the state, per the FAA, if I can't run that drone past my line of sight, we might as well just put boots on the ground over there looking for the little girl or the, the, the guy or the drug addict or whatever. Because if I can see it in my sight, what's the point? I might as well just walk over there or send 10 cops over there or whatever. You know what I mean? So, and I did walk up to Strickland and he says, or oh, I can have an observer radio me and tell me that. And I said, no, that's not what it says. And I argued with him out back about that too. That's not what it says. It said the drone operator, not a second person that's that's got it in its sight, not an observer. It doesn't say observer. It says drone operator. The person operating the drone cannot be past their sight. Not an observer radioing back at you because that's no longer your sight, is it? It's the other person's sight. Do you see? They're already trying to twist and turn and do what they want with the FAA rules. Absurd. I had a conversation with them out back. It was cordial. They were nice, but I told them what was up. I told them all this shit. And we have to have accountability, folks. Accountability. We don't have it with our own fucking council. Let's not start the bullshit with our CPD, too. Again, I've told you Michelle uses the CPD for her own little evil wickedness. Okay. What's it going to take for her to whisper sweet nothings in somebody's ear at the CPD to have them do surveillance on her fucking neighbor or some shit? I don't know. You can't trust these people. And now we're going to let the CPD make their own policies and procedures and rules. We need to have them be held accountable. Our council's not held accountable. I'll be damned if we're going to have a CPD running amok now too with fucking drones in the air surveilling people. It's not, it, it's not going to happen. I won't let it happen. And I will FOIA request to make sure that these policies and procedures are put into place. I will bitch and I will moan and I will be a thorn in your fucking side, city council, until you put policies, procedures, and restrictions in. And that also includes the accountability for where these drones are every second, who's checking them out, what times they were used, what dates they were used, and what they were used for. 
It's like checking out a library book. I want, talk about chain of custody. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I want accountability. I want accountability. And then I'm going to wrap up with this in regard to the drones because on the actual agenda item they gave, they say they need to, why, why the fuck they need two? I don't know. But anyways, um, they said that they needed that this contract will provide two police drones for rapid response and search and rescue operations. Okay, that's allowed. Assisting in the location of missing persons. I said that was allowed as well. Apprehension of fleeing suspects. It touched on that in the in the statute if, if they were, if, are afraid that they're going to ditch evidence. This last part has me a little concerned. And other incidents where a helicopter is either unavailable, impractical, or would take too long to respond. What does that mean? Other incidents. What other incidents? Could you please expound on that, CPD? I want you to expound on that. What other incidents? Because you pretty much covered everything that was in the uh, in the Florida statute. What other incident would you need that uh, if a helicopter is unavailable and impractical? What other incident? You need to put it in here because it needs to abide by FAA, the Florida statute. And again, we need to have policies and procedures. Michelle just wants CPD to do what they want because she's, you know, got all their balls in, in her purse. Just saying. Pretty much the police union's balls. Let, let me specify whose balls exactly. I'm telling you folks. This shit's going to get out of control. And I had a citizen walk out with me last night that said, I, I, I like what you had to say up there. He goes, that's, that's concerning. I said, I know it's concerning. You do something, you get something, you know, with good intentions, but it, it's, it gets, it, it gets the, the waters get murky and you start fucking running amok and you start using the shit for things that it wasn't intended for. Just saying. It's something for y'all to think about. It really, really is. It's scary. So now we're going to have two drones running around Claremont. I don't know what they're going to do with it. They say that they're going to follow statute, but that does, that's not good enough. The ACLU did a fucking um, report back in 2023 of August saying that the city council must enact these policies and procedures. And if you delve and you look into other cities and states, they have those policies and procedures put in place by a city council or a board or whatever they've got going on in their town. Not all of them are called city councils. We, we need to get on the ball, folks. Again, our, 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 our council um, isn't held accountable. They run amok. I, we don't need CPD running amok. Not with fucking drones. Not with fucking drones. Sorry, not sorry. And with that being said, uh, peace out and take care. And I will see you again very shortly because I will be having a an update on um, our uh, city election and, uh, of course, our candidates. All then. All right, take care. Bye-bye.